What's up guys? Welcome to another pottery video. Today is an episode of throwing thoughts. Again, so I got a bunch of pots to throw, but this one's special because we're gonna do it jointly with uh, Joel Cherico. So Cherico Pottery does, he has a lot of followers. If you don't follow him, you definitely should. Uh, he does tons of Facebook live videos, is what he really does a lot of. That's how I found him. So if you're on Facebook, you notice my wheel? It's a little quieter. Change the motor. But anyway, Joel Cherico, he is a really great potter. He was a really big inspiration to me when I started thinking about how to share my pottery and my art online. You've seen him before on this channel a couple times. But anyway, so we're gonna go live with him because I guess Facebook has a way now that you can like co-go live. So we're gonna try that out. So I'm gonna have my phone set up going live with him. He's gonna record the recording of that and then send it to me and then I'm gonna splice it together into a video with my recording. Hopefully that all works out. I got a couple things I'm throwing. I'm throwing some candle holders. Like, I have a local candle maker that is making, is gonna make candles inside of my pottery and then we're gonna sell them. We'll probably sell them online and at the coffee shop. If you're interested, the first restock of the year is February 12th. Just in time to order something for Valentine's Day that won't get there by Valentine's Day, but still maybe is something you want to do. So these little candle things are basically just small cylinders. They're quick, they're easy. And then I'll just give them to her when they're done. She'll make candles in them. She already did it to a couple, but that's what we're gonna do. Okay, let's get set up with the Facebook Live thingy. Hello, hello, hello. There he is. Hey, how are we doing? Doing good, John. Seeing you loud and clear. Hey, you look sharp. You got a uh, high resolution over there. Nice. I, I have no idea. I've never, I've hardly ever done a Facebook Live, so I don't know what I'm doing. Oh my God, doing. so much prep work for this, right? I'm still, yeah. I'm like still preparing clay. It was like 15 minutes. Oh, I have to go to live right into with John. I'm so prepared. <laughs> Yeah, once you said you wanted to experiment more this year, I was like, you know what? Yeah, no, I think I think everything's an experiment. See what works, see what doesn't, do more of what works, do more of what's fun. So this was all inspired by John. John had a video called uh, Throwing Thoughts. Did I get that right? Yep. Throwing Thoughts, where he was just hanging out and doing a YouTube video and kind of talking about, talking about your goals for the year, right? Um, yep. And stuff that you were just thinking about anyway. Uh, yeah. Which is definitely like how I got started doing live videos too. I was just like, I'm gonna be doing this stuff anyway, right? Why not have people in the studio hanging out? Right. Yeah, man. Well, I guess if you're not gonna be able to throw while doing it, you could just kind of use this as a soapbox for some of the things that you're, that are coming up that you're excited about. Like I was curious to ask you about, um, Puerto Rico, I guess we can yeah. just jump there. Yeah. If you're in Puerto Rico, you're gonna meet potters there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we're staying in two different parts of Puerto Rico. One's on the west side, uh, like in the surfer town of Rincon, and then one's more on the east side where like San Juan is. And I probably have connections to like eight or nine different potters in the area that we're gonna visit, make videos about, and then, um, <laughs> And then we also are doing like a, I don't know if you want to call it a workshop, but there's a potter there with a studio that is inviting people and they're gonna, I'm gonna throw pots and have people come and just chat. And I don't, I, I wouldn't really call it a workshop. It's more just like a, like a meet and greet with artists and potters in Puerto Rico. So we're excited. How did you find what, eight or nine different potters in Puerto Rico? Yeah, so I, I have a friend that is an art, an artist in this community in Waconia and she and her husband spend the winter in Puerto Rico. And so she's really connected in the artist community in Puerto Rico. So she was the one that originally was like, hey, you should come down and like do a workshop or do some sort of thing with the potters. And so I didn't really wanna set up a huge workshop thing. It, it's also like a, a way for my family and I to, to get away. Um, so we're just gonna meet people. I'm gonna bring my camera, we're gonna, make some videos about different stuff. And I'm hoping to make it like an annual thing, you know, where I go to a certain spot, meet a bunch of potters, make some videos and come back inspired. Cause that's really what, I mean, I took a trip back before I made my YouTube channel. I took a trip, a road trip all around the, 
Southwest and California, Colorado. And that's what inspired me to start my YouTube channel. Actually, I can remember like writing it down and in my journal that I was journaling, I was like, I should start a YouTube channel. And so I just have always found that travel is super inspirational for me. And I come back with new ideas and new perspective. So building that in, like making sure it happens every year, I think is important for me. Well, I get that 100%. I mean, not only do I remember you telling me that story, um, before, yeah, before you had a YouTube follower, YouTube channel at all, right? You were, were you even making pots and Mocha Monkey then, or was it before that? Yeah, yeah no, I was, I would have been making pots for like six or seven years, but I had no online presence whatsoever. So I wasn't on Instagram. Yeah, I'd only sold in person before that. It's such a so, good one. Like we all start with zero followers. Right, yeah, everybody did. But I like, like, we're both pretty privileged guys when you think about it. We're really, we're pretty, like, we're pretty lucky guys. Like you, we're both small business owners. We both have families, we have homes. Yeah, like, for sure. I, really, I spent a lot of time kind of just in my own cave knowing that you were out there doing your thing. And I don't think I've ever told you like how much I appreciate knowing that you're out there just like hustling hard all the time. <laughs> because yeah. I don't want to sound gloaty. Like you and I have it, we have it pretty good. Yeah. We wake up yeah. every day and we talk about pottery. I mean, how good is that? It is. It's great. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. But I, I want to like lean into this a little bit more because I agree with like everything you're saying. Like my logo, my you know, my mountain logo that's on every pot. Right. Like you see yeah. it that's inspired by travel. Yep, yep. Like I grew up in Iowa and it's flat. But every year we would travel to the Rocky Mountains as a family tradition with, so I put a couple Rocky peaks in my teacher's logo, which was a flat line with a circle inspired by like a flat landscape with the sun. Yep, I put yep. some peaks in that because we traveled to the Rockies every year. We're going again in March. Like we just scheduled a trip and it's really just to be moving, to be away from home, to be in a big inspiring place. So it's, yeah. it's funny. Well, you can see you can see travel is just like procrastination or leisure, but it sounds like you're going. You want to get deeper. Like, no, we want to we want to learn while we're there. We want these experiences that have profound influences on your life, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, for sure. And I I feel like you know when you when you just are in your day to day like constantly, it's easy to keep doing the same things that you've been doing. And I feel like sometimes when you travel or you get away from your day-to-day -day or whatever it just kind of like jump starts something new and i don't know what that is yet but you can only find out when you try something different or go somewhere different and see different things and talk to different people and all that stuff well yeah and that's why you've been able to like you're you're pretty self-reflective like you've been able to say okay i'm gonna take a step back think about what i really want and you had said like oh i see you see you saw me doing facebook live things you're like okay that's cool but i don't want that what do I really want? And you're, I mean, who are some of your favorite YouTubers? Cause you obviously knew a little bit about YouTube before you just jumped in with that decision, right? For sure, yeah. I mean, a lot of the YouTubers I followed right away were like Peter McKinnon is a huge YouTuber that makes great videos. He has nothing to do with pottery, right? He is all about videography and uh, cinematography and all that stuff. And so he was super inspirational to me to like how to get better at video and how to think about making actual YouTube videos and interesting and being a personality and, you know, just letting yourself come through on camera. And so he was a big one right away. Peter McKinnon, like there's other potters. Uh, Matthew Kelly is another guy that, um, he is, yeah, he's a potter in North Carolina and we found each other through YouTube. And so he makes videos too. And I went and visited him. He, that was another super inspirational trip that I took was to North Carolina wood firing with him. Uh, so yeah, a couple of those were, are some of my, I, I don't watch as much YouTube anymore. And so that's one of the things I want to get back into. Like I just have, I spent a year and a half making two videos a week, every single week. And they were like really high quality. And then the, I focused more on the production side of things the last like year. So I haven't had as much time for YouTube, but I want to like continue to pursue that. Cause I just feel like it's such a great platform to be able to share things. And so many people are on it looking for different inspiration or wisdom or tutorials or anything. Did you say you're going to do like four videos, like a video, a video a week? Is that what you said? One. Yeah. One video a week is my, is what I'm doing this year. Dude, dude, that's like <laughs> double what it was before. No, I was doing two videos a week before. Oh, two a week? That's one every two. Yeah. Hours. 
Okay, okay. So, so, so you, yeah. So, so one, one is doable. One's doable. Cool. That still sounds like, I mean, I know how much work you put into the editing, the planning. You have to script it, right? Um, yeah, YouTube is hard. You've done the work. <laughs> so I'm excited to see what Yeah, it is. I'm excited too. It's going to be fun. You said you're going to switch to a fully hosted online store. Okay, so that's what I do. This, we've got an online yep. store. Um, we have three of them. One we just launched and two that I've had for like a long time. But you made the decision early on, like, I'm going to stick with Etsy, probably because the tools are all there. Did, like, why did you decide to use Etsy at the beginning? Well, just a few other people like Hammerly Ceramics, if you follow him, and Matthew Kelly, and some other people had used it. And it's so easy to use, so simple. Um, and I guess right away, I wanted to focus more on like, getting past the people that wanted them other than learning how to create a new website. Like it was more just out of necessity. And so, yeah, now it's just time to think about something else, you know, like Etsy takes fees that aren't necessary. If I'm bringing all the customers, you know, Etsy's great for people that don't have a way to get their like people to their website. Like basically I'm just using Etsy as a checkout stand. And so there's no reason to really do that. One thing that is nice is their review system. I mean, I have over, you know, 1,500 five-star reviews that are really nice. So if P it gives a lot of credibility. Yeah. What What is your website hosted on? Or how do you guys do it? Yeah, big commerce. Okay. Okay. So I wouldn't recommend that today. Uh, yeah. No, I wouldn't. I, which is funny because I just built another website. Um, I, ch I chose to do it on big commerce just because, you know, it's like mapped in my brain. Kind of like what you're saying. Right. We just pick the things that are easiest to get us back on the pottery wheel, to get right. us back, right. you know, making or doing right. YouTube. Like, so if I were going to recommend something today, I'd probably say Shopify because they have more, I don't know what their pricing structure is like. I heard they take a percentage of sales. I don't mm. know if you know mm. if that's true or not. I don't know, but I know that a lot of like Hammerly uses Shopify now and that was my plan and Matthew Kelly uses Shopify. So, and I've, I've dabbled in there like creating a website through them and it seems pretty self-explanatory and easy. So I do think that I will use Shopify. So I'd recommend Shopify because not only do they have a tip jar when you're checking out, someone can leave a tip, oh, interesting. which is like, duh. Like I've had people yeah. add a tip before and I do the Facebook stars, yeah. um, which is literally just leaving a tip. So I, you know, I email big commerce and say, Hey, Shopify has this. Can you add it? And they say no. Yeah, like, uh, and there's a lot of other little things where yeah, I wouldn't recommend Big Commerce today. I'd recommend uh, Shopify. Uh, plus, I think they're when I've shopped on stores that I know have Shopify, I'll get a text message if I've logged into any Shopify store. Yeah. Yep. Quick little, you know, two-factor verification, and then it propagates all your credit card and uh, address info safely. So I think they built a reputation with customers across. 100% of the businesses that you shot, like you shot from Matthew Kelly or Hammerly, your, your info saved. Yep. Which I think is really convenient. I don't know if Big Commerce does that. I doubt it. Um, but again, I don't know the pricing structure. I'm not sure what it's going to cost you. Yeah. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's not as much as I pay on Etsy for the percentage. I Yeah, I can get, almost guarantee it. Well, and don't they like require certain weird things with shipping? Like you got to have free shipping or something like that? or They don't. They don't require that. They say that you will get priority like in their algorithm if you offer free shipping on Etsy. And so if you're worried about people finding your stuff, then you have to offer free shipping. But for like me, where most of my followers on, are coming from YouTube or Instagram or wherever I'm like going, then that doesn't really matter as much. Yeah. By, by the way, if you're watching this and you don't know who John is, go follow John. Like, <laughs> go, uh, he, he's like... He's a better YouTuber than I could ever hope to be. Like I can't, I've thought a lot about YouTube and I, I couldn't do what you do. It's you put, you put the enthusiasm into it and I know how hard it is. And like you have, you have a, a storyline, a through line that starts from like very humble beginnings. Like again, it's your problem. So I like that. Uh, you're right though. Well, I, I appreciate that. I've never had an algorithm for my fully hosted store, right? So I don't know, if you work at you Shopify, where space I've heard can be good, but I don't know how robust yeah. it is. Like if coupon things. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, Etsy is kind of a mixture of a social media platform and a shopping site, right? Because people are, they're scrolling through Etsy looking for whatever. And, you know, it, Etsy has a billion mugs to show them. And so they get to decide what mug they're going to show to people. So you're also dealing with the algorithm aspect. Whereas if you host your own site, you're kind of dealing with that with Google, you know, like search engine optimization and all that stuff. But if that's true, where you can get a lot of people that are just hanging out on Etsy, what have you thought about trying to get 200,000 followers on Etsy like you have on YouTube? Yeah, I've never thought, I've never really thought about using Etsy as like uh, the viral aspect of Etsy doesn't seem to be there like it is on other sites, you know? Like I had a, a reel on Instagram get like 70 million views and I got 50,000 followers. Like that, that just doesn't happen on Etsy, you know? Etsy's there for, I don't think, I mean, I could be totally wrong. And, and like you said, I mean, I only have so much bandwidth to focus on the things I want to focus on. And for me, it's been YouTube and, you know, some Instagram here and there. So that's just like, I haven't thought about the Etsy side of things yet. Yeah. And big commerce, like I said, that one, that's been easy for me. I'm going to stick with it, but big commerce and Shopify are kind of the same thing. Um, and I can tell you that big commerce is affordable. Like it's totally, mm -hmm. you know, it's affordable. Yeah. Your price goes up when your sales go up and it's, uh, um, you know, it's been sustainable. I've been doing it for like 11 years. Just yeah, right, right. And you know it so well since you've been doing it for so long. It just, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it'd be like switching from, it'd be like switching from electric firing to, you know, buying a gas kiln if I were going to switch yeah. to shop. Like, yeah. I'm like, that's cool. There's pros and cons. I don't know. So uh, either one, if you, but it, for you making the switch, since you're already like, like, do you want to keep making the same quantity of pots? You want to keep making like thousands and thousands or you want to like, you talk like Kai has been in your studio a little bit, right? You've talked yep. about, okay, what's the potential with, with Kai or with the logo mugs or with both or like, do you see the logo mugs that you've been working on? Like those are, so you call them the custom. Yeah. yeah just, just custom mugs. mugs. Yep. So do you, do you see that being part of what you do in the online store to do that? Like, do you currently ship those to customers or do you think you might want to start doing that? Yeah, that is a good question. I, so far, I'm going to only offer those custom mugs to local customers because I already have probably, I, I think I have around three or 400 already reserved for this year. So, and if I can not have to ship, like shipping 50 mugs is just a lot of pressure um, in terms of like, I just have no idea how I'd ship 50 mugs economically and make sure that they're all going to get there. You know, like I'm really good at shipping one you mug. Know, you didn't go, design go, your, say? your studio for YouTube, for your spiritual, like I'm going to stay sane when I make pottery because I'm no longer going to be in a basement. Right. I was making it in right, my third floor. Right. Been through the insane times. Like I'm going to build yeah. a comfortable space. Love that'll come across in every video. So now you're like, you're, you're reaching that point where it's like, okay, do I want to ship? You're right. 50 mugs. It's like, yeah, it's, it's without like a, a very good system to do it. It can turn into a nightmare. Yeah. And then, I mean, I've shipped like a large part, like a large amount of pottery before and had like half of it break. And it's just not, you know, it's just the worst. <laughs> so so yeah, I'm not sure. I'm going to, I'm going to do it locally for now. I might cap it at like, you know, 12 or 1500 a year. Like we'll do 12 or 1500 custom a year. And then the rest of it's going to be like what I want to do. Dude, you can just work the Minnesota thing. And then you get to like, I'm going to take a trip to Duluth this weekend. You and the family go to Duluth, drop off a yep. hundred pots yep. at one of the five coffee shops. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So it, it, it might be something like that. And when Kai, you know, I have a full-time employee that's going to start in May. He may Kai's coming on full-time. And then we'll kind of see what happens there. So we might, you know, if I can do 300 pots by myself a month, you know, we might get up to 500 with him and me or 450 or something like that. And that'll just open up a whole new, and because he's going to start edit, like learn how to edit some videos for me. So the YouTube should hopefully increase. So there's just going to be a whole new like world of possibilities. And that's one of the reasons I was really ambitious with my goals this year was because I know that I have him coming in May and that we can really start cranking pots, cranking videos and do some cool stuff. Okay. So 
what's something i'm sorry you can okay cut me off at any time if you're like okay i need to go i'm i've got shit to do i've got stuff to work on i just we haven't really like sat down and jabbed like this on a live video so this is fun for me yeah. uh yeah, oh yeah this is great okay youtube what's a video that you've thought about doing but you're like that's too crazy i can't do that you're like oh that's too much work not gonna do it. but you've thought about it like what are some that have been in the idea cloud where you're like not right now, maybe someday, but, or, or have you ever like, you just do them all, you just have an idea and you go for it. No, I mean, I have, I have a lot of videos around traveling to see other potters that I have wanted to do. Like, um, Kevin Kowalski in California, like he makes soda kilns and does some really interesting stuff. And I've talked to him about coming, flying out there and visiting, um, and just like, I'd love to go all over the world, you know, go to J Japan and China and like share, you know, give people the experience that they can't get. Like, I know you've been to Japan and Japan for two weeks. Um, some friends of mine are just returning from Japan. We've not gotten together and talked about it yet, but we're going to have a little bit of have some Japanese whiskey, some suntory nice, and nice. sit down and fire and hear how their most recent trip was with COVID, right? All the COVID restrictions, the new world. Yeah. Brand. Um, because they had to apply to go there because they were looking at opening a restaurant in Japan, in Tokyo. That was how they okay. were able to accept it into the country. Yeah. Uh, but when I went in 2015 and I, in two weeks, I met with two potters and one of them was, I mean, you, you've been on YouTube enough. You've probably seen a little bit of Shoji Hamada, some old yeah, black yeah. and white. Oh, oh yeah. Yep. yep. Shoji Hamada, anyone else out there, Shoji Hamada, he's like, he'll sit at a wheel cross-legged spin it with a stick right cross-legged and then throw a pot and the clay moves like this fast and the wheel stops because it's, it's like 40 pounds right there's no momentum just crazy good thrower and he was a national living treasure like that's basically our bob dylan like yep. when obama yep. bob dylan the medal of freedom that's what the <laughs> got 55 national living treasure. and i had tea with his grandson that's like awesome. went to the studio was talking about pots, asking questions, and invited me to, you know, have tea with his grandson. And, and then there's another guy, uh, Shiho Kanzaki, and I held a $5,000 tea bowl in my, in my hands from his gallery. And he spoke yeah. English, joking about it, oh, we'll drop it, and all this is <laughs> crazy. It would have made amazing YouTube content. Uh, yeah, right? So, so travel, yeah, but that's like, oh, God, that's weeks, that's jet lag, that's yeah, flights. yeah. Well, and one, you know, the one video that I really wish I would have made and pushed a little harder was, was to interview Warren McKenzie when he was alive, like right away. That was like right at the beginning of my YouTube channel. And I really like, I wish I just would have pushed because I know he would have been fine with it. If I would have showed up his house and been like, Hey, I'm a young potter. I want to like, just interview you a little bit. He was super into that kind of stuff. Like he would let people come in and yeah. So that's one of the things that I wish I would have done and didn't. Yeah. I showed up at his place once and he was out peeing in the bushes and it just finished pugging clay and it clay all over his pants he's like oh no it's okay come in he's like zipping his pants up he's like come on in it's okay it was hilarious and yeah, then he yeah. For like an hour. yes yeah so that i mean that would have been so fun to have that on video before he and then it was like you know i had those ideas to go with him and then six months later he had passed which was just such a bummer so yeah, I mean, that, that's a good lesson to think about, like, get things done while we can, you know, while you can. If I want to go make a video, then, then I should do it. Kowalski Pottery, that's in California that you mentioned? Yep. yep, yep. Are they the ones that Seth Rogen is firing with? Yes, yep. Seth Rogen fires with them a lot. Yeah. Which that would be, yeah, yeah. It'd be fun to, to interview Seth Rogen. That would blow up online. Seth, he does tons of interviews for... For Houseplant, his company, he's yeah. as long as you're. Like, I want to talk about your company where you sell marijuana legally to people in California, and yeah, all these yeah. housewares. But he's just that's his shtick, right? He's Seth Rogen, the movie yeah. star, and yeah. all the pothead. He he loves doing interviews, and from what I've seen, he doesn't really choose big or small as long as it's really professional. Yeah, like, yeah. right. If right. You just do YouTube Seth Rogen interviews, he'll do whatever's fun. Like if yeah. people want to sit down, yeah. and interview, he did an Instagram live with Adam Field, who I'm guessing you know, he's a yeah. yes, yeah. Kind of peer of ours. He's a much older potter who's like somebody that I looked up to all the time. Um, 
Mm-hmm. They jam live together because they just like collaborated on a little ashtray. Uh, yeah, and he's got like nine million Instagram followers, and he'll still just like, yeah, half hour. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So cool, man. So some travel. Wow, that's so that's a whole different animal. I see why you haven't pulled the trigger on some of those yet. Well, like, what, I mean, my favorite YouTube video that I've made so far was the wood firing video with Matthew Kelly. So it was like the whole trip I got, it was like a 30 minute long YouTube video, but the whole thing was, you know, like quick clips and like sweet B roll of like the fire coming out in slow motion. And that was just like probably the video that was the most fun for me to make. And also the one I'm most proud of. And so more like that's what gets me super excited. And that's when I'm like the most creative and most effective is when I'm really excited about something. And so that's where I feel like, and this Puerto Rico trip coming up. I mean, that's kind of part of this is, you know, experimenting with traveling, filming, you know, my whole family's coming with, so that'll be a little interesting with three boys under five years old, but uh, we're going to make it happen. (laughs) Well, it's also like, what, what would it look like if it were really easy to do? Like, let's say, ideal scenario, what would make it all like super easy to do? So for example, Casey Neistat, who I'm yep, sure you yep, know, but yep, yep. everybody else, the YouTuber who started just making YouTube videos because he was curious about it, he liked it. And I think, I don't know if this was his big break or not, you can correct me John, but he like convinced Nike to give him, I don't know, 10 or $20,000 or something. And he said, I'll make a commercial for you. It'll be amazing. And they're like, okay, so he convinced the suits to give him his first, like, sum of money from ads. And he took all that money and he said, I'm not going to make what I told him. I'm just going to go travel for, until the money's gone. <laughs> went to traveling in a sprint and, like, went to Egypt and, like, got a tattoo and, like, did all these things that he'd never done before. And it was by far, like, the most entertaining video he'd ever made. So not only did he, like, he hustled to, like, make that happen, sure, but he also like fulfilled his promise to Nike because it was massively popular. He had a great time and now his YouTube page is monetized. Like it's, it's really well monetized. Like he's bringing enough per oh, video yeah. to buy it. So I yeah, just wonder if there's some, something that might make all the, like hit all the rest of the dominoes. Like what would be, okay, it's a crazy idea to travel all the way to New Zealand to meet potters. But what would it look like if it were fun and easy? Well, maybe there's some way to launch it. I don't know. I don't know. You, you know, know, one idea, I mean, you're, you're spurring an idea is just to have a cameraman and come with, you know, to just have somebody else that's filming everything so that I don't have to worry about the filming of it. Then, I mean, that would be the thing that would make it easy is to, to have someone film it. New Zealand. What'd you say? I think Kai might enjoy a trip to New Zealand. Yeah, yeah I know. I mean, Kai is, is the answer to a lot of these questions, I think. And yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Sweet. I can't wait to see what you're going to do this year. I'm going to let you go because you can get back to making pots too. For can't sure. the only one playing. Um, I mean, this was fun. I mean, we should figure out. I couldn't see the, the comments the entire time. So I think I might try. This is an iPad next to me. I might try a computer next time because they, like, they go away. And I want to be able to see what everyone's saying the whole time. Yeah. So I think there's things we could tweet where my ear pods too. Um, Cause well, I've got this microphone very well. And I think if I got my Wi-Fi a little uh, extended, then that would make a huge difference. So I think we should definitely do it again. I'll get the Wi-Fi figured out and we can just keep changing it until it's easy and seamless. What's it, what's it easy like? Yeah. I don't know. My I have buddies, a buddy who makes music, who's been hounding me to start a podcast. And I'm like, dude, I don't just, that's another thing. Like another, another thing I have to do, but, but like, this isn't a podcast, but what do you do on podcasts? You kind of sit and hang out and talk. Yeah. And pretty comfortable on the pottery wheel and on video. So. Yes, like, I agree. I, I think and if I could be throwing two at the same time, like we could do this all day. We could easily do a, a episode a week and then I turn it into a YouTube video, you know, all that stuff. Okay. So, well, we just got done with the throwing thoughts with Joel and It was less than ideal because of my Wi-Fi connection, A. And uh, I guess he had some things that he wanted to tweak on his end too, but yeah, I think it was fun. I think that it would be great content to have as YouTube video, also potentially like podcasts. I don't know, we'll see where it goes. But if we can figure out how to make it easy so that my Wi-Fi works, 
his stuff works on his end. My audio was not that good, so I need to get that figured out. Maybe I just get a podcast mic. I don't know, we'll see. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Next videos coming up are gonna be from our trip to Puerto Rico, so get excited. I'm getting in the groove of YouTube videos here. It's very exciting, very exciting times. All right, see you guys in the next video.